the opioid epidemic, which has been in large part funded by the federal government. And you'd think there would be bipartisan support to do something about that, but it doesn't appear to be the case. President Trump signed an executive order today that is intended to combat this crisis. Heroin use has quintupled in the past 15 years, and overdoses on that and related drugs have killed more than 30,000 people in the last year. That's more than 10 9-11s in a single year and more than four times the deaths in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. Congressman Tim Ryan represents Ohio, the Mahoning Valley, a place that has been devastated by opioid abuse. He says the president's order doesn't do enough. Can Republicans and Democrats come together to do more, or if the two parties only agree on gridlock? Congressman Ryan joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So the president says we need to take this seriously. That's not something you have heard very much from national leaders in the past eight years. Why is this bad? Well, it's just not enough. We don't need another commission. We need money to make investments into this problem. Uh, the Surgeon General just had a report. We just passed a big comprehensive bill on this. We don't need another commission. We know what the problem is. The problem in large part is pharmacies and places that have, and there are interactive maps that show this, that have pharmacies prescribing a lot of opioid prescriptions mm -hmm. have not surprisingly massive addiction problems. Now this is not the case in the rest of the world. A lot of countries, pharmacies are not allowed to prescribe opioids. You have to go to your doctor in a hospital for that. Why doesn't Congress just pass a law tomorrow ending that? And that would do a lot to solve the problem. Why aren't they doing that? I, I think that's a great idea. I think we have to, you have to do both. You have to do the prevention, treatment, and all of that stuff. But yeah, there needs to be a massive crackdown on, this, on these folks. And I, for one, would be ready, willing, and able to do it. And that's what I'm saying with the president. I mean, we don't need a commission. We need the president to say what you just said, and let's get to work. But I guess what, I'm a little confused. Look, I, I think you know, you've seen this firsthand. It's rampant in the district that you represent, yeah. as it is in a lot of rural America. But I don't want understand how Democrats are saying, well, you know, taking away Obamacare funding would make this situation worse. This problem has flowered under the seven years of Obamacare so far. So whatever that program is doing, it's clearly not stopping this problem, is it? Well, it, the Trump care provisions were to get rid of the essential benefits package that we put into Obamacare. The essential benefits package uh, included mental health and substance abuse coverage. Right. So if that goes away, that person in Trumbull County, Ohio, if they want to get clean and they can't afford it or they're on the Medicaid program and then they go to get treatment, they're out of luck. Okay, I'm not against treatment. I think it's great. But you know as well as I that with opioid addiction, which is a physical addiction in addition to a psychological addiction, the, the relapse rate is really high, no matter what the program is. Yeah. So maybe job one would be preventing this from happening in the first place. So Purdue Pharma is the main producer of the main drug at the center of this, OxyContin. It's a massive company. The Sackler family, which owns it wholly, is one of the richest families in the world. And yet, they're donors to both parties, big donors to the Clintons, the Clinton Foundation. I don't hear any politician standing up and saying to them, what are you doing profiting from this? Why not? Well, th I think that's a piece of it, but it's not the whole thing. And, you know, we Why need, hasn't anyone we, done that we, in the last we, eight years? We need to be clearer on the fact that we're prescribing too much. But it's just as important to make sure that we're telling our doctors, we're training our doctors, don't see this as the ultimate solution and keep writing these prescriptions. We have a bill uh, to help with the VA clinic to begin to educate doctors about what a big problem this is. How about punishing a few? So in your state, Ohio, there are 100 opioid prescriptions per 100 people. And that's hard to believe. That's the CDC number. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure how they arrived at that. It's shocking. And you mm -hmm. see that in other places, too. Why not say to doctors, if we catch you over prescribing, we're you in jail. Why wouldn't we do that when this is killing more people than the last two wars? Yeah, well, most of it would be state law, those kind of regulations. The crime and punishment comes from the state. But well, I would can, be, I would easily be federal. I would be, most I of would, our drug laws are federal. I would be all for us sitting down. Let's have hearings about this. This is what I'm saying. We don't need a commission. We need some ideas that we can begin to execute well, how about and a talk about that acts. Well, I'm all for it. I mean, the Republicans are in charge right now. I would be supportive of something like that. But why haven't you or anybody else? proposed it. And for example, how about penalties for people who allow drugs in their possession to be misused? If I leave a loaded handgun on my front porch and a child takes it and kills himself, I'm liable for that, civilly and criminally. Mm -hmm. And yet you're reading stories, studies that show that a huge number of kids who get addicted to heroin started by stealing their parents' prescriptions. Why not punish the parents? 
Well, I mean, sometimes the parents may actually have a problem that, that they are utilizing the prescription. That's why a lot of this can be education, and I think we need to focus on education of parents, of kids. There needs to be a massive public relations campaign, especially for young kids not necessarily dealing with the painkillers, but you hear these kids having these pill parties. We've got to make sure these kids understand that just trying this stuff once can get you addicted and kill you. Is there so a there single person who doesn't know that about heroin? Is there one? Is there a single addict who cares about a public relations campaign? Well, I think once you're addicted, that's a whole well, different exactly. that's a whole different ball game. I'm talking about young kids. No, of course a lot of young kids don't know. They they don't they have no idea that the, they don't know the, that heroin is addictive. Of oh, course these they opiates, know. these pills. Yeah, of course they're, they no, they're in a they're in a little medicine bottle. They okay. they look like they're just medicine. It just seems to me, and again, you know a lot of this since you represent a district where this is a big deal. Mm -hmm. But at the height of the crack cocaine epidemic, that pulled the attention of every lawmaker in Washington to it. The death rate was about two per hundred thousand. The death rate in the opiate crisis is over ten per hundred thousand. No question. So it's just a, it's a massive scale, and yet I don't hear anybody talking about the supply problem, penalties for people who push this crap into communities. Why wouldn't Congress tomorrow get behind legislation to get punitive on this if it's that serious? Well, I, th I think that there's a place for that. I don't think that, but you can't just say punishment is going to be the only. Uh, Issue. But there's no punishment at all. Well, there needs to be some. But why? I guess I just don't and understand. I agree if we with know you. that drug companies, and we know their names, are profiting from the stuff to the tune of billions of dollars, and pharmacies are too, and places where they're making the most money, you have the most addictions and the most deaths, and no one has said, well, wait a second, why don't we punish the people who are profiting from? A, a scourge that's killing thousands of people. Like well, what? Well, we would need regulation. We would need money invested into these things, and that would take you know Congress acting and actually uh, passing a budget. But again, it can't just be punishment. It's got to be prevention. It's got to be talking to the kids. It's got to be teaching and training doctors not to just prescribe opiates randomly because it solves a quick problem. Knowing that at the end, it's about uh, they were talking today about um, taking your pills that you got in your medicine cabinet and bringing them and disposing of them properly. It's got to be a comp it took us five years. A Tucker to pass CARA, the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act. Five years we've been working on that bill to, to reauthorize programs that we're going to be able to help with prevention and treatment uh, and, and recovery. And it takes a long time to do this stuff. So what, what, what's the highest success rate of a drug treatment, treatment program that you'd like to see the government fund? I mean, what's the ideal? No, what, what's the most effective one? Can you think of a rehabilitation program for opioid abuse that yeah. gets the abuser off all drugs, not just on methadone, but off all drugs? What's the, the success rate of one? The most, the most effective programs are the longest ones, and the longest ones are the most expensive ones. So you can say, well, we're going we're gonna to dry out for seven days. That doesn't have nearly the impact. But, but you're, you're saying that we should spend hundreds of millions on this, which you know, and we spent billions on these kinds of programs over the years. And my question is a simple one: How successful are they? What's the most successful one? Like, what do you recommend? Uh, the the long-term care is uh -huh. the best one. 30 days, 45 days, 60 days. You've got to completely break the addiction. The and other, do they the work other, well, after five years, do you have a 50% success rate? It, it all depends on the person. I mean, because a lot of times these guys, men and women, they sometimes go back to the same communities that they came from, the communities where they got addicted in the first place, the communities that they're buying the heroin. So there's a lot of problems that are. I, I guess I just want to bottom line it. Are you familiar with a program that you would seek to fund as a federal legislator that actually works, that gets, say, the majority of people, however long the program is, however much? your cost gets the majority of them off opiates for five years well there's a lot of programs that do the long-term care and there's, there there's one, one works? there's one that do the short there's all kinds of treatment centers the, and I'm, what I'm telling you of all the treatment centers in the country the ones that have the highest success rates are the ones that have the extended plans but a lot of those aren't covered a lot of people don't have the insurance okay. they don't have the out-of-pocket part of my steps is I've just seen a lot of this up front and I'm, I'm just not aware of any specific program that has over time a consistent success rate over 50 percent. Maybe they exist. I'd love to hear from anyone who runs them, but I'm just not aware of that. Well, it's going to be expensive. This whole thing is going to be an expensive proposition. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Tucker.